welcome to this video song frontier video my name is jay wakefield and today we're going to be taking a look at a 2007 toshiba laptop it says a toshiba satellite l300d um but before i do that i would um i'd like to actually apologize uh, for my last video you see, I came to edit it um, in the program that I normally use, uh, which was uh, it's been traditionally Sony Vegas um, <clears throat> since I've been back on Windows. However, Sony Vegas has become quite buggy as of late, you know, and it's um, it's been crashing with my third party uh, upload to YouTube um, plugin. Now, I know Vegas has its own plugin to upload things to YouTube, but it's not really that good. You know, I was having problems with that before. So, um, on the advice of uh, LML3 and Road Geek, I actually, um, actually gave Power Director a whirl. And I do very much like it, but last night, you know, it was the... Um, well, I say last night, it was... Uh... Now, this is confusing because... It was last night when I rendered that video that went out four days before this one. Um, but yeah, it was, um, you know, it was the first time, that video, it was the first time it, I was using it. Um, so, you know, and, and I didn't actually realise that the video itself was actually quite blurry. Um, you know, I only found that once I actually imported it on the computer. Um, you know, so it was, um, was a bit of a learning curve, a curve, but hopefully I should get back into my groove and should be able to, you know, kind of make videos up to my usual standard. Obviously some things have now changed, you know, due to Power, uh, power Director's way of doing things. Um, you know, I've got, um, I've got quite funky transitions and I also have, um, you know, my credits actually roll against um, a background, which is uh, the St. Andrew's Saltire, or um, in other words, the Scotland flag. Now, um, let's get on with this video. Um, but before I do that, I'm just going to have to quickly jump cut, first to turn off the flash, which I didn't realise it was on, and second of all, to try and respond to these messages that I'm getting on Facebook. So we'll be right back. Right, that's me back. Sorry about that. Um, <clears throat> anyway, this laptop then. What's its story? Well, the story is, I was actually given this machine by someone. He was saying that um, the machine would uh, boot up, but it would switch off after a few minutes. So, um, but if I wanted it, you know, for parts or to see if I could do anything with it, then I was welcome to it. So I took him up on his offer. This machine is uh, quite an interesting one. As um, it is actually a 2007 model. And, um, you know, I've been chatting with uh, LML3 and Road Geek. And, um, you know, it's like Road Geek and I have made XP time capsules, you know. His is a Dell Dimension 2350, mine's is a Dell Dimension 4600. Um, but, you know, I've been thinking, and, and I was chatting about this with Elmo 3. I don't, three, I don't think uh, Road Geek, aka Belly, is actually too keen on this idea for obvious reasons, but um, Luke and I were actually talking about making uh, Vista Time capsules. You know, it's something that, you know, I've been playing about with the idea of since, uh, you know, since the autumn. Um, <clears throat> but just really never got around to it because, I mean, of, you know, the Car 2 Duo machines that I have, couldn't really bear to put Vista on any of them. And I was thinking, it'd be quite neat if I had a Turian 64X2 in the fleet, you know, just, you know, just to kind of have one, you know. Um, as it turns out, this machine is a Turian 64X2 based computer. And 
it comes with Windows Vista pre-installed. So, you know, hopefully if it continues to work, this could make a good uh, Vista time capsule. So let's have a tour of this. Uh, things. This machine is a wee bit mock-it. Look at that. Something in the VGA part. It's disgusting. Don't think this machine was really tracked very well. In fact, that really is actually starting to annoy me. Is that bit of residue in the VGA part? <sighs> Seriously, I'm, I'm going to need to get something to kind of... kind of uh, kind of pry it out. Hang on. I... Flat-headed screwdriver. I'll be right back. Okay, what am I way to attempt now? Don't try this at home. It's what I'm way to do is... <laughs> I'm just going to stick this screwdriver in below the VGA port and see if I can... <sighs> there we go. That is much better now. <laughs> yeah, this machine hasn't been very well taken care of. I can tell it's got bits of stuff all over it. I think the reason it might have been switching itself off is probably due to overheating. Also the fan, I mean it wasn't clogged up with dust but it was quite dusty and it is quite whiny as you will hear. Um, but when I got this machine the keyboard was not actually working. So um, I actually did. Um, I actually did order a new keyboard for it. And um, sorry, guys, but I did fit it off camera. Um, I was a wee bit too excited to try and get this machine going. Yeah, but I have tested it, and it does seem to run okay. I decided the best course of action was to see if I could restore the original OS from factory settings. Um, but, because I like making restore videos and because I like uh, documenting different uh, system restore uh, factory reset procedures, um, I'm going to do it again for you guys. Anyway, back to the tour. Sorry, I do tend to procrastinate quite a lot. Okay. Ugh. Still stuff in this VGA part. Right. <clears throat> right, okay. Um, this is about as clean as the port's going to get, I think. So on the left, we have a slightly cleaner VGA port than we did before. Hang on a minute, I'm going to see if I can focus this a bit better. Um, then we have an Ethernet port, two USB ports, um, an Express card slot. And on the front, we have the LED catch. Um, a wireless switch, microphone and headphone ports, um, a volume knob. Um, well, this is a physical volume knob. I, I do not believe it is analog. In fact, it isn't. It's actually a digital knob. Um, what it does is control. It actually controls a software volume adjuster. Anyway. On the right hand side we have another USB port and a DVD uh, DVD rewriter uh, DVD writer drive and the power socket and a Kensington lock slot. On the rear of the machine we have a 56k modem. So that's the uh, that's a tour of the machine taken care of. You know, kind of typical, you know. Kind of typical 2007 fare, really. I mean, a lot of these laptops, you know, by by this time, you know, in the computer industry, a lot of these machines are pretty much similar. But I must admit, I, I do believe that Toshiba did have a bit of a downer in the mid-2000s, you know, even in, you know, the somewhat early 2000s. You know, I've... <clears throat> I've owned a couple of early 2000s Toshibas. It's, it's they're not the most pleasant machines. I did use a Toshiba Satellite Pro for a wee while in school while I was uh, uh, without my own laptop. It was a mid-2000... It was a 2005 model, I think. Um, it had a Celeron 
and it had 256 megs of RAM, of which 64 megs was shared by the graphics card, leaving me with 192 megs of RAM. <clears throat> which, what, uh, and whichever way you look at that, for Windows XP in 2005, that's not enough. Anyway, let's open this machine. I do believe that, um, ironically enough, by the time 2007 rolled around, Toshiba had kind of started to get the plot together. You know, that they'd started to kind of get their stuff together. Um, you know, and I think, I do believe that the machines they're making now, while they may not be of the best build quality, I certainly do believe that they are better than they were. And, uh, you, you know, I guess I do have a soft uh, spot for these Toshibas. Anyway, um, going to plug a mouse in so it'll be actually easier than reaching around the tripod to have to track. So, um, yep. So I plugged in a wee mouse. Oh, hey guys, that's me. Yeah, that's the trouble with these glossy screens. I have to look at myself. Yeah, and I know on the screen my hair's on the wrong way round. Anyway! <laughs> Mirror images, side partings, very amusing. Anyway, um, let's switch it on. What we're going to do is we're actually going to restore this machine back to its factory settings. So to do that on this class of Toshiba, I have to press F8 to get to the Windows boot menu. Excellent. And then I want to select the option to repair my computer. <coughs> yeah, sorry guys, you can kind of still see me. And I think I'm going to close. I think I'm going to close the blinds. I, um, you know, I... I resent having to do so, but um, you know, hopefully it'll uh, make the video a wee bit clearer, a wee bit less misty. Now, excellent. So like I said, this machine is running Windows Vista. Um, just to add even more fun, it's running Windows Vista RTM, and we all know how good that was. Now, <clears throat> Windows Vista... Yes, I make no I make no uh, secret about it. You know, if you're comparing it to Windows Seven, why would you have Vista? Why would you choose to have Vista apart from the fact that you can't afford a Windows Seven upgrade? If you had to, if you if you could choose one or the other, why would you choose Vista? Yes, Service Pack Two did make Vista a lot better, and at the time, Windows Vista was pretty good. You know, some of the features it had. In it. I thought networking was a lot easier in Vista, especially wireless networking. I liked the vo the photo gallery app. I liked the interface. You know, the, there was a lot to like about Windows Vista. It's just a shame that it was pretty uh, badly written. <clears throat> anyway, so we've got to select a keyboard layout. Now, having a look at this keyboard, we see that it is British. Excellent. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select United Kingdom. Wait a minute. Sometimes it's just easier to press U. United Kingdom, right. So I'm just going to click next. Now on this machine, right, it's going to ask me now for uh, my password. Now on the screen, normally you'd have options like, um, you know, system repair, system restore, uh, Windows Complete PC Restore, Windows Memory Diagnostic Tool Command and Command Prompt. And yes, all those options are there. However, on this install, as with some other machines of the time, I think um, Asus did it this way, you actually have to go into the Windows Vista setup, uh, the Repair Your Computer option in Windows Vista, 
to actually access the reco- um, the recovery program, which will actually default uh, restore the machine back to factory settings. On this one, you go to Toshiba HDD Recovery. Recover the complete Windows operating system to its original state. So what we're going to do, I'm actually going to click on that. You may use this program to recover your operating system to the original installed factory state. Please be sure that your AC adapter is connected. Yes, I have connected that. And that you backed up all of your data uh, from the operating system drive to another location. All data and programs on the original of the original Windows operating system drive usually C um, will be erased. Uh, press the back button to exit or next to continue. Well, I'm going to click next to continue. Uh, collected data from HDD recovery partition, um, SW image file, that's what it is, language English operating system Windows Vista. If you continue the recovery process, the SW image file will be unpacked to the original operating system partition. Press back to go back or next to continue. Um, if you choose yes, if you choose yes, the operating system will be recovered to the originally installed factory state. Choose no to go back. If you continue, please be sure that you've connected your AC adapter and that you've backed up your data from the operating system drive to another location. All data and programs of the operating system drive, usually C colon, will be erased. Do not interrupt this process. Sorry, I had to shout that because there's an exclamation mark and it's all in capitals. Thanks, Toshiba. Wait a, cla- wait a caps lock, really good. Are you sure you want to do this? Yes. So like all recovery programs, it just keeps asking and asking and asking and asking until you you actually go, Enough! Enough! Yes, I will back up my data! <clears throat> Honestly, it's kind of, it kind of reminds me of The Simpsons. Um... It kind of reminds me of The Simpsons where the kids are asking uh, Homer, will you take us some out splash more? 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 Anyway, um, this is what the recovery process looks like on this machine. Okay, yes, it's not that pretty. You know, if you're wanting a nice wee progress bar and you're wanting, you know, a nice wee colourful background and what have you, buy an HP. <laughs> In fact, don't do that. Don't buy an HP, because, yeah. I don't think I've ever known anyone to buy a computer on the strength of its recovery routine. Although, um, you know, if you're... Yeah, business laptops. Um, Usually, you'll get an operating system desk, and then you get a driver desk and application desks. Anyway, uh, this will take some time. It actually shows the progress and the time remaining. And, um, so yeah, I think the best thing I can do is, well, the best thing that you could do if, you know, if you're doing this is, you guessed it, go and make yourself a cup of tea. I'll be back once the restore has finished, or at least nearly finished. Okay, that's a restoration done. Um... It's now come up with a dialog box saying the recovery process is finished. Please press restart to restart your computer. Okay then, that's what I'll do. Now it's going to go on to the next portion of the system restore. Kind of odd seeing that Toshiba logo with the Turian 64 uh, logo. See, I'm used to kind of working with Intel machines. <clears throat> Some of you will know that I don't actually have that many AMD machines in my collection. I'm just trying to think which ones I do have, actually. I know I've got... The Compact Presario 2240, which is a Case X2. This one, um, an Equium that needs fixed. And the... I think an HP Omnibook as well. So this is uh, just going to take a wee minute or so. Please wait while Windows sets up your computer. 
Ah, you can, but this is like, you know, it's Windows Vista. It's very slow. But I suppose I should talk to you about um, the specs of this machine while, while we're actually waiting on it. Um, <clears throat> this is a Turion 64. I believe it's clocked at 2 gigahertz. It's got 3 gigs of RAM. Um, oh, I'm no good at this. A hard drive of some sort. Mechanical. Um, so I to <laughs> forget the size. Um, AM, uh, an ATI, sorry, Radeon. That was uh, that was kind of before AMD actually owned the shop. Um, ATI Radeon uh, 3100, I believe. Something along those lines. <coughs> and it has sound... And, um, well, you can tell this is a cheaper machine, actually. Um, the left mouse button's sunken in. It still actuates at the moment, but um, you do tend to get this kind of behaviour on budget laptops. The left mouse button just kind of gets sunk in through all its use. You know, and I, I find that quite sad. Now it's saying, please wait while Windows continues setting up your computer. Now we have a new screen, a special Toshiba screen. <laughs> um, that is finishing the installation, may take several minutes. Please do not interrupt or shut down the computer. So let's set it up. Because this is a, because this machine um, was bought in the UK, is actually a British image. So, you know, country or region, United Kingdom. Time and currency, English, United Kingdom. Keyboard layout, United Kingdom. So I'm going to hit next. Um, accept the license agreement. Wait, what? Service pack one? Right, okay then. Um... <clears throat> Wasn't expected, I'm pretty sure I had to install Service Pack 1 last time. Right, so now to put my name in. And then um, name the computer. Um, I'm just going to kind of stick with the default background. Um, yes, I do want to use recommended settings. Jinx is at the time already. May the 24th. Um, yeah. 15.30. Two. Thank you for setting up Windows Vista. Obviously, Windows Vista likes to do its own thing, so it is going to run a benchmark on the hardware. Vista runs a benchmark, and you actually get to see something called billboards. Now, I've not seen the installer for Windows 10, but certainly from Windows 7 up the way, billboards are definitely a thing of the past. You know, and it's, um, but I kind of liked it, you know, I kind of liked reading a bit about what the operating system was about, you know, while waiting on it installing. I sometimes still like to read the Windows 98 billboards. Windows 98 makes your computer more powerful and easier to use. <laughs> Didn't know my camcorder looked like that, or even had a camcorder. Oh yeah, that's right, all the pictures in Windows Vista look like they've been taken uh, on the side of Loch Ness. Except there's no monster in it. Now this is pretty cool. <clears throat> With Windows Vista, um, I get access to three chess pieces. A very well decorated monarch 
and two people will gather around my computer monitor. Just the monitor, not the machine itself, just the monitor. <clears throat> also, something about my having to visit the uh, el the um, optometry, uh, the optometrist, uh, so that I can actually get a magnifying glass to magnify a book with a bluey green cover. Also, it will give me a monitor with the Windows Vista background and a shield. Um, I also get um, access, they'll give me a clock, a calculator and some post-it notes. That's, that's very nice of them. Although I never did get these things. What I can do is I can take an envelope out of a out of a, a, a diary. That's that's really brilliant. <laughs> it lets me do all these things. And then we're back to the uh, odd looking camcorder in the picture of Loch Ness. That's uh, so. I mean, there there is quite a lot of things that you can do with Windows Vista. You get all these kind of rad, random wee uh, objects. It's uh, it's really nice of them to have thought about that. I wonder if the um, I wonder if the two people that will cluster around my computer monitor will be any good company. And I certainly hope that magnifying glass makes that book easier to read. Oh wait, that's actually a folder. It's a binder with uh, different sized bits of paper in it. So um, I've got to say that doesn't actually look as tidy as it could do. Now, the um, million dollar question here, is this actually going to start up? Is it actually going to take me to the log on screen? Can I actually log on and see the desktop? Or am I going to have to wait another 15 years? The cursor's disappeared, now that could mean anything, it could mean we see the start orb. Like that. <laughs> Excellent, the log on screen. So now it's just a case of me logging in. Oh yeah, I probably should have told you there's a wee bit more waiting to be done. Come on. There we go. Because it, ha it now has to set my desktop up for the first time. It's preparing my desktop. Which is really quite nice when you think about it. <clears throat> Once again, this is going to take years. But now we do get to see what version of Windows Vista we're running. We're running Windows Vista Home Premium. You know, which I do quite like. You know, but... Unless you're running the 64-bit version of Windows Vista Home Basic... What I've actually found is that, you know, back in 2007, if you were, you know, if you had a choice between running, you know, if you had the opportunity to run 32-bit Windows Vista Home Basic, I would probably say don't. I would probably say stick with Windows XP. Because what you would have found is, you know, there's really no kind of pull factors for the 32-bit version of Windows Vista Home Basic. The... 64-bit version, yes, I can understand because... But then again, it only supports up to 8 gigs of RAM. But, um, you know, 32-bit version of Home Basic, you'd have been better off with XP. But Home Premium does actually bring, you know, a few things to the table. It brings an improved version of Media Center. If you're upgrading from Windows XP Media Center, that's fantastic. If you're upgrading from Windows XP Home Edition... You actually get Media Center. You also get a DVD creator. Not that I've ever gotten that to work properly. You, um, you know, there's, there's quite a few things that you do get. Um, Aero Glass, you get that. But then again, I mean, that's just eye candy. <clears throat> and, you know, I don't know. Um, 
Aha, uh -huh. now we're here, which is um, Toshiba Notebook Registration. Do I want to register? No, I don't. Sorry, I'm in the way of the camera. Please wait. Finishing the inst installation may take several minutes. Do not, please do not interrupt or shut down the computer. But I thought you'd finished it already. Come on, I'm only here and I'm only here to use my laptop. Okay, I'm back. Um, and now this is asking me to restart my computer. Your computer is now ready to use. Please restart once to ensure that all settings are applied correctly. <clears throat> Shutting down. For a while, I was kind of wondering if um, there would be uh, jings, if there would be updates. But then I remembered I'm not actually connected to my wireless, because I don't believe I am. Just gonna get my uh, flash drive out because a um, couple of things I need to do with it. Once again, it's taking its sweet old time. Oh, there we go. Now it's telling me to please wait. So now I can log on. There we go. <clears throat> and here we are. We are at the Windows Vista desktop. This isn't fully loaded yet because there's still a sidebar to come up. Oh, you remember that. And, um, ah yes, the Welcome to Windows Vista screen. Actually, we'll give you a wee run over of what your computer has on it. Windows Vista Home Premium. AMD Turian X2 Dual Core Mobile. RM70. 3 gigs of RAM. ATI Radeon 3100 graphics. Computer named Toshiba-L300D, and there is the sidebar, but it isn't the Windows Vista sidebar. This is actually the sidebar that came as part of Google Desktop. Do you remember Google Desktop? That kind of... <laughs> I remember Google Desktop. It was very popular. I think it came out in 2005 or 2006. Extremely pop... Well, a few people had it, and... You know, back in you know back around this time, a lot of manufacturers would actually bundle it with their computers. And as much as I like Google software, um, I use an Android phone, and at the moment I'm using Google Chrome. Um, there's really only one thing that can be quite reasonably done, and that's to delete it. Quite a lot of other things with here. Uh, my photo book. Links to Amazon and eBay. 
Google Desktop. McAfee Internet Security Suite, that'll be a trial. Microsoft Office 30 day trial. Microsoft Works 9. My Photo Bucket, Picasso, which is a Google Photograph thing. Quite good, actually, is Picasso. Um, Toshiba Assist. Recovery Desk Creator. Services and Options. Toshiba Tempro. Toshiba User's Manual. Toshiba Warranty Registration. So there's quite a lot on here. First things first though, I need to actually change the mouse pointer. I'm going to change it to black, so I'm not going to be using the arrow scheme. Um, right, good. So I can actually see the mouse pointer. Next thing to do, well, first of all, I'm going to see which version of Vista is on here. Service Pack 1. So this is probably a 2008 machine, actually. It came pre-bundled with Service Pack 1. Um... <clears throat> I'll have a look at uh, the hard disk size. Looks like it's a 160 gig disk. It's got HDD recovery. Oh, look, and there's a Toshiba logo. That's nice. Um, next thing to do. Oh yeah, and who remembers? Oh, it's actually loaded the whole thing. I remember when Control Panel used to actually have to try and load it, set, like load in various parts. Oh my goodness, it was, oh, it was awful. Anyway, what I'm going to do now is um, I'm going to go to Remove Programs and Features. A few things I need to remove, Google Desktop, McAfee, and the Office 30 day trial, I plan to install a full copy of Office 2007 on here. Um, and Adobe Reader probably needs updated as well. And this is something this is actually something that um, a lot of pre-installations are actually criticised for. Pre-installed images are criticised for the fact that they actually have, um, you know, quite a lot of bloatware. And this one really is no exception. Google Desktop. I've, I've never really felt that there was any benefit from using Google Desktop on Vista versus its own search. I mean, yeah, sure, you have to leave your computer idle for, you know, basically an afternoon and let it index it for you. But once you've done that, yeah, it's not bad. It's pretty good. Um, you know, I have I have pretty much um, always liked the uh, Vista indexing thing. What's this? Java. The same. Tell me that there's some sort of update to be had. Um, so, I'm just going to uninstall some of these programs. Um, but when it comes to removing McAfee... When it comes to removing McAfee, what I'm going to do is um, actually use the McAfee removal tool. It's always better to use something like that. You know, McAfee provide it themselves. There is there is a version uh, put out by Symantec to remove Norton Antivirus. Oh yeah, and then you get this sort of stuff. A webcam that puts out these stupid toolbars on your machine and no visible way within the software to actually stop it from starting with Windows. Um, so you'd have to go to the uh, system configuration manager and then it's like, oh, is this going to continue to work after I, you know, is the web, will the webcam work after I've actually stopped this from coming up? I don't know. I don't know. Do you know? I don't. So... Check any 
Stop it. <laughs> oh, all the fun's happening now. Uninstalling programs, having to restart the computer. Yeah. This is why I like the idea that um, HP and Acer have had nowadays. You can actually... Um, it seems now that you can actually make... Well, have a two choices for installation. You can either have the full image installed with all the software, or you can go for a minimal un install. Um... You know, and some of you will remember that from my Compaq Preserio CQ61 video. Um, that I was actually able to perform a minimal install of Windows 7 on that machine. And, you know, it worked really quite well. Right. And then, you know, obviously, I was, I was actually given the choice then. Um... To be able to install individually any one of the applications, or none of them at all, that I wanted, that would have uh, came with the system. Basic installs still installed things like PowerDVD and what have you, because, you know, it was stuff that was to do with the, um, well, the hardware inside the computer, rather than just, you know, bits of software like those stupid game packs that you get nowadays. What is with that? It's like, you go into the games folder, you've got like a, a list of goodness knows how many games. You click on them and it's like, oh, you've actually got to buy this. Why put it on my computer then? Stop it! And I know what you're thinking. Yes, I am one who laments the demise of um, the, com the uh, software bundles that will have came with computers. That is correct. What I liked were software bundles that came with computers that actually made them useful. Things like WorkSuite. You know, things like having a copy of Nero on it, you know, coming with an encyclopedia, that sort of thing. You know, maybe a financial management program. Things that, you know, a family could use, you know, make use out of. Not blooming trialware. That does not impress me. I mean, my photo book. What am I going to use that for? Photographs? How does it even work? How come I've never worked? Has heard of it? Right now, now I will install uninstall. Ugh. Someone's tweeting me. Uh, now I will uninstall the Google Desktop. Yes, I would like to. Um, I'm not using any of the features. Right, I'm going to stop this from running with Windows. Bloop. Google Desktop has been uninstalled. Brilliant. Going to keep Works on there, because why not? Going to keep the Toshiba stuff on it. I'll keep the Windows Media Encoder stuff. I'll keep the compatibility pack. I will, however, and yeah, believe it or not, I regret to do this, but I will remove the Google Toolbar, because it's no use in no ornament nowadays. I'll have a look at my photo book actually, you know, just just see what on earth it is. Why not? We'll, we'll have a wee look at it. So why does it feel the need to um, make my mouse pointer smaller? You look, you take the photo, we make your book. Looks like a neat program. You know what, I might keep it on there just for a wee while, have a proper play about with it. Right, now it's time to remove my coffee. 
Right, my phone's battery is low, so we're going to have to kind of be quick about this. So, what we have here is a McAfee software removal tool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go through this. I'm going to type in the capture. And then what this will do is it will go ahead, search for any McAfee products that are installed on here, and it should remove them. So, yeah, what it's doing is it's actually removing all of the McAfee stuff that is installed on here. And then it will restart the machine and hopefully it should be a bit quicker. Now, because I'm on borrowed time with this, I think I should end the video here. Um, so, in conclusion, there's a few things that I will still need to do before this machine is fully up and running. as my 2007 kind of Vista time capsule machine. Um, I need to install Service Pack 2 for Windows Vista, which I have downloaded. And hopefully it's on my flash disk. If not, I can copy it over. Um, I want to connect it to my Wi-Fi. I want to download all the Windows updates that are still available to Vista. It's now in the long-term support phase. Um, the extended support phase, which basically means you won't see really any new features. You'll just kind of see security updates to kind of patch it until it goes out of support. Um, I'm not sure when Vista goes out of support, actually. Um, but I, you know, I mean, people are still using XP to this day. When Vista goes out of support, I'm not sure that many people will be too upset. You know, it's, um, see now, Windows Vista, I think, is, it's a shame. It's, Windows Vista has kind of became synonymous with a, an operating system that just isn't very good. You know, it's, it's like we, you know, it's like, and I know I've done this myself, and I've heard other people do it. People referring to various versions of uh, Mac OS X as Apple's Windows Vista. You know, and it's... Uh, <laughs> and it's it's kind of like Windows 7. It's, it's kind of become synonymous with a mainstaying operating system that is really good and really quite dependable after, um, after a, a really bad version. Um, but... You know, is that, it is happening now that people are actually starting to get nostalgic over mid-2000s machines, including Windows Vista. And you know what? I must confess, I'm a wee bit nostalgic for Vista, Marcel. You know, it, I did use it back in the day. You know, I did use it back in 2007. I built my 2007 custom belt so that I could run Vista. Um... You know, and it, I, I must admit, you know, despite its flaws and what have you, you put it on the right system, it'll run, you know, it won't run too bad. It's, it's certainly, you know, it certainly was livable on the right system. But you had to have the right system, and that what its crux, uh, crux was. You could buy a mid-range machine back in 2006, um, you know, running XP, and it would run it pretty well, you know, and you'd have room to spare. Trouble is, if you then put... Windows Vista on it, when it came out, it would turn your mid-ranger into basically a, um, oh, sod off you. Um, it would take, it would turn your machine into a word processing and email machine, literally. You know, and I was angry about that. See, I think this has started speeding up already. Anyway, so, before my camera battery runs out, my phone's battery runs out, I will end this video here. I'd like to thank you all for watching. Hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please feel free to subscribe. Please feel free to like my uh, like Video Song Frontier on Facebook and to follow me on Twitter. The URLs and my Twitter handle will be coming up. But until then, thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll all join me for the next one.